I will build a duplex to live with my parents, and you will have to help me out with hundred thousand dollars. You don't have any veto power. What belongs to my daughter-in-law is ours, isn't it? My husband and in-laws have said so, and have tried to build a house on the land I inherited. But I will never let that happen. I told them a fact. But I'm already single. My name's Sarah, and I'm a 34 years old office worker. After graduating from college, I got a job at a securities company and worked hard. I enjoyed my work because the more I did it, the more result I got. So I just spent my days focusing on work, and I found myself being entrusted with a good position. I was making a lot of money and had a lot of savings now. I was satisfied with my life and thought I was having a very fulfilling time. However, I suddenly realized that all my friends around me were getting married and having children. I felt like I was being left behind. Seeing their families happily getting along, and my parents have been asking me a lot about my recent tendencies. Is there anyone out there who is good enough for you? I think it's great that you work so hard at your job, and that you are able to get results. But there is also something to be said about being happy as a woman. Yes, yes, I get it. Sarah, I'm serious. If I could get married so easily. I wouldn't have a hard time. Well, that's true. My father started talking to me about marriage whenever we saw each other. One day, when he was not around, I asked my mother about it. Why is Dad rushing me to get married lately? You know, his health hasn't been so good lately. Huh? Oh, I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. He is worried about you because he has come to believe that he could die at any moment. Because as a father, he wants his child to be happy. I guess he also wants to see you as a bride or see his grandchildren. I see. I was surprised because I didn't know my father had such circumstances, and I strongly wanted to get married and show my father and mother how happy I am. However. As I had been devoting myself to my work without much attention to my love life, I didn't know how to find new encounters. Where do people find their partners? When I was wondering this, a friend of mine suggested I attend a blind date party. I had never been on a blind date before, but I thought it would be an experience and decided to attend. It seemed like I would never meet anyone if I didn't make an active move like that. It was my first time attending a blind date party, but it was more fun than I had expected. I was worried that it would be more of a meeting place for men and women, and that the atmosphere among the women might be a bit tense. But it was more like a drinking party, and I was able to enjoy talking with both men and women. The men and women were all very kind and nice, and the conversation was lively, no matter who was next to whom. Then, we all exchanged contact information with each other, and one of the men contacted me individually. That was Jason. Jason was 29 years old, five years younger than me. I think he was the youngest of all the participants at the party. He was also good looking. And was very popular among the other women. I was surprised when he contacted me, but I was even more surprised when I saw the content of his message. He told me that he had enjoyed talking with me so much that he wanted to meet me alone this time. I didn't expect such an invitation from him, but I was very happy, and I immediately agreed to meet with him. We had a great time. And our conversation was very enjoyable. After a few more dates, he asked me to go out with him, and that he thinks about marrying me later. We then decided to start dating. Our relationship was fine, and in no time at all, six months had passed. Then one day, Jason said he had something important to discuss, and invited me out to dinner. 
I suddenly became concerned that it might be a breakup. I wondered if I had made him feel uncomfortable or bored because of the age difference between us. I was very scared, but I gathered up my courage and went to the restaurant where I was to meet him. And I was having dinner with him anyway, but I was not in the mood. The meal seems to be the same as before. But I still hadn't heard what the important thing was. Will he talk about a breakup after this meal? Is this the last supper we will take together? If so, I forgot to taste it. I was thinking about that and didn't realize I was being called by name. Sarah, Sarah, are you listening? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm about to tell you something important, so please listen to me. I knew he was about to tell me something important, and I braced myself. Then he said, Sarah, will you marry me? Let's have a life together from now on. For a moment, I did not understand what he was saying. Then finally, after some delay, I understood it in my head. What? Marriage? Seeing my surprise, he anxiously asked me if I would reject. No, no, no! I was just a little surprised. I took a deep breath, looked Jason straight in the eye, and replied, I'm very happy to be together with you. Jason looked very happy when I accepted his proposal. I couldn't stop smiling. I had not expected a marriage proposal in such a short period of six months of our relationship. So I thought he was completely on the break track. And since I was in such a state, the proposal made me many times happier. Then we reported our marriage to each other's parents. My father and mother were very happy and congratulated us many times. After the wedding greetings and the meeting of both families, we were successfully married. Many of my friends and colleagues congratulated us at the wedding. And I felt my happiness growing. Then we went on our honeymoon and started our life as husband and wife. My honeymoon with my husband was very happy. I was surprised at how happy I was just to be with the person I loved all the time. Sarah, welcome home. Dinner is ready. Oh, thank you. My husband always finishes work earlier than me and arrives home before me. And he prepares dinner for me. I used to prepare dinner by myself after coming home from work after a long day of work. And I'm extremely grateful to him for doing that. Thanks to my husband's hard work, I'm able to focus even more on my work. As I ate my husband's home cooked meals, I felt deeply happy that I had married him. I was able to fulfill one of my filial piety by showing my father how I got to be a bride, and living with my partner was definitely the happiest time of my life. However, I would later come to regret that this marriage was a mistake. The first signs of this began to appear about six months after our marriage. Huh? One day, I looked at the bank book of our couple's shared account. And there was a withdrawal that I didn't remember. For some reason, $500 had been deducted from our shared account. We put a little money into this account every month, but I had never made a single withdrawal. So my husband was the only one. I was a little worried and asked my husband about it. I don't think it's a good idea to withdraw our money without permission. And I don't think it's a good idea to keep quiet about it to your partner. Jason, what did you do with this money? My husband was a little upset when I showed him the bank book. That's because, well, actually, it seems that grandpa broke his arm. So I gave him money for his hospitalization and treatment on short notice. Oh, really? But I didn't have any money in my account. So I hurriedly took money out of the shared account. I see. I'm sorry I didn't tell you, but I was going to put it back when I got paid. I see. That's all right then. But I still wish you would have talked to me about it beforehand or something. 
I'm sorry. I will be careful next time. He said and apologized repeatedly. So I decided to forgive him for the time being. However, after that, my husband regularly withdraw money from the shared account without my permission. Each time I asked him what he used the money for, he gave me a reasonable excuse. But I gradually became suspicious of him. Then, I couldn't stand it any longer and went a little hard on my husband. Hey, you're spending too much money on your own, don't you think? And Jason, you don't put money into the shared account at all anymore. I want you to explain to me what's going on, because if you don't, I won't be able to trust you anymore. When I said this angrily, my husband started to get upset. I'm using the money for our family. The money in our shared account is ours to begin with. So what's wrong with me spending it? I'm not saying you shouldn't spend it. I'm saying don't spend it on your own. I told you, I'm using it to pay for grandpa's medical bills. Why are you? His grandson paying for it. Isn't it supposed to be paid for by your mother or father? Well, that's... Don't try to cover it up with a lie. When I said that, my husband was driven into a corner and suddenly said something outrageous. Then, do you want a divorce? What? Divorce? If you doubt me that much, it will be difficult to continue our marriage. Wait a minute. I'm not thinking that much about divorce. Then be a little nicer to me. I'm spending the money in our shared account, and I'm sorry for that too. Okay. I was still in love with my husband at this time, and I didn't want to get a divorce because then I wouldn't be able to show my parents their grandchildren's faces. However, I will later regret that I should have divorced him quickly at that time. Since then, my husband has become a little cold toward me. He used to prepare dinner for me, but he stopped doing housework. And lately, when I come home, more often than ever, my in-laws are there. Molly and Ronald, what is going on with you? I'm here to see my son. Is it a bad thing? Sarah, how can you walk till late while we are here? Did you not want to see us? No, it's not like that. She's a workaholic. She's also a tightwad when it comes to money. Well, that's an up description. My in-laws laughing at me and making fun of me. I was fed up with a situation where I came home from work and my in-laws were there. This would still be better if I worked more overtime and came home just before the last train. After that, my in-laws would come over to my house and my husband would have a friendly chat with them. I also thought it was kind of weird because as soon as I come home from work, they will leave as if this is a sign. My mom and dad would leave quickly because you always looked so uncomfortable. I was shocked when he really said something like that to me. Was it my fault? I'm just working hard. Why should I be told such a thing? I was starting to get pretty stressed out over my husband's attitude and my in-law's attitude. Besides, while I was working so hard, my husband was having a nice conversation at home with his parents, who came home before me. Just thinking about that made me feel really angry. Furthermore, since I'm currently paying for all of our living expenses, I'm also responsible for the utilities and food that my in-laws spend when they are at our home relaxing on their own. There were many things that I didn't agree with, and I was beginning to wonder if I should continue living this marriage life. Then, an event occurred that gnawed at my heart. It was the death of my father. My father suddenly collapsed from acute heart failure and passed away. It was so sudden that my mind went blank. Even when I saw him in the hospital with a white cloth over his face, I still couldn't believe that he had passed away. I couldn't show him his grandchildren, 
and my mother and I were saddened. I had heard that he had been in good condition recently, even though his health had been getting worse. Then, I was suddenly told that he had passed away, and my emotions were not able to catch up. But despite of my grief, I knew that I had to make sure my father's funeral was held properly. I hurriedly made arrangements and preparation for the funeral, and somehow managed to hold my father's funeral without incident. Then, afterward, the lawyer explained to me about the inheritance. He told me that my father had made a will in preparation for the eventuality of his death when he became ill. In his will, my father left me and my mother a share of his savings, and I was to inherit the land of my parents' house. I wasn't that concerned about the inheritance, but my husband and in-laws, not me, were extremely agitated about the inheritance. Sarah, is it true that you inherited the land? Yes, that's right. That's great. Then let's build a house. Why? Because you inherited the land. Then, let's tear down your stale parents' house and build a new one. And we'll make it a duplex and live with my mom and dad. Wait, what are you talking about? I'm not going to do that. The land is mine, but my mother still lives in the house. Why don't you just say something nice and ask her to move somewhere else? Don't be silly. There is no way I could do such a terrible thing. What the hell? We are a couple. You could at least listen to me a little bit. Every single time you ask me for something, it's too much. I'm not asking you to do anything unreasonable. Living with my parents and building a new house, those are two things I'm asking for. Nothing too hard. I'm saying that's unreasonable. I didn't think my husband could be this difficult to talk to, but I would never let him build a house. I had thought of various countermeasures, but my husband was tougher than I had expected. He brought his parents to our house every day and told me that he was going to build a two-family house with the three of them. They also showed me materials they had obtained from a real estate agent and seems to be steadily preparing to build a house. Then, perhaps out of frustration, his attitude toward me became stricter and stricter. Come on, we are asking you to build a house so many times. Just get on with it and start getting the house ready to be built. You are too slow to act. No, I don't approve. I don't care what you approve or disapprove of. You married Jason. You do what he says. It's really hard for me to keep listening to them yell at me like this when I come home tired from work. But I don't leave it at that. I'm secretly making preparations. Then one day, my husband and in-laws must have gotten impatient because they tried to subdue me by raising their voices and looking even scarier than usual. I'm going to build a two-family house to live with my parents and I want you to help me with $100,000. You don't have any veto power. We are already on the verge of moving forward with a real estate agent. What belongs to my daughter-in-law is ours, isn't it? My husband and in-laws have said so and have tried to build a house on the land I inherited. But I will never let that happen. I told them a fact, but I'm already single. What are you talking about? My in-laws are upset by my statement. Jason, have you forgotten that you stuck divorce papers in my face? You have been shoving filled out divorce papers in my face lately when things don't go your way. I have filed them. I'm sick of you threatening to build a house on my inherited land. So I let you become strangers to me. Then the land will no longer be any of your business. Bullshit. I don't accept that. That's right. That divorce is now and void. I will sue you for divorcing without permission. The in-laws were furious with me, but I couldn't lose. 
I'm sorry, but divorce is final because Jason, you are having an affair. Me? What are you talking about? You don't have to be so defensive. I had the credit agency investigate, and I got a bunch of pictures of you bringing a woman into my house during the day. I also found out that you quit your job without my knowledge. No wonder you've been spending all the money on the shared account. But I'm going to make you pay for it. I'm going to make sure you pay out money for the affair. My husband and my in-laws became pale and lost their words. For now, can you just pack up your stuff and leave? This apartment is rented in my name. If you continue to stay here, I will call the police. Wait a minute, police? From my point of view, it's more disturbing to have strangers in my house. I said that and took my phone and made it easy to understand. Let's see, it was 911. I said. Then my husband and in-laws rushed out of the house. I immediately locked the door. After that, I filed a claim for alimony against my husband and the adulterer through a lawyer. I also canceled the apartment I was living in with my husband, and I returned to my parents' house and started living with my mother. Then, I rebuilt my parents' house with the inheritance I received from my father and the money I had saved. The house was made barrier-free, so that it would be easy for my mother to live in, even if she became old and her legs and hips deteriorated. And the other rooms were also made new and comfortable for her. My mother was very happy with the new house, and I was also happy to see her like that. By the way, my ex-husband and in-laws are now spending their days in a state of isolation, not being taken seriously by anyone around them. They had been bragging to the neighbors that they were going to build a new two-family house, but as a result, they were abandoned by me. There was no more talk about the new house, and then word spread about my ex-husband's infidelity. So the neighbors are giving them the cold shoulder. Furthermore, my ex-husband has already quit his job, so my in-laws are now paying the alimony that my ex-husband has to pay every month on his behalf while supporting him who doesn't work. I feel sorry for them, but I also feel good about it because they were the ones who have directly caused me pain. I'm going to take their example as a lesson to me and try to live my life honestly and find happiness in an independent state. It's tricky because it's hard to tell the difference between truly nice people and people who pretend to be nice at first before they approach you and reveal their true nature. I thought it was wonderful that Sarah was resolute in talking back to her in-laws. It's also great that she hired a credit agency to uncover her husband's infidelity. Now that you were able to cut off the troublesome people, I hope you can meet a wonderful man this time and have a new happy marriage. I wish Sarah all the best for the rest of her life and all the happiness in the world.